quick rundown of the Daniel Smiths. Uh, so this is called a half pan. You can buy them like this or you can pour your own straight out of the tubes. Tubes come in two, mostly two different sizes. There's a 5 mil size or a 15 mil size. Um, and then you've got uh, different ranges within Daniel Smith. So as I mentioned, the Primatech are the granulating colors. Um, they, tend, I, they tend to be mostly my favorites. Um, you've got um, Wendy's favorite color, Opera Pink. Wendy, this is for you. Um, these are called just the straight up extra fine watercolors. Um, they are professional grade. They're fabulous colors. The saturation is amazing. That's one of the things I love about Daniel Smith is they don't really fade over time. And then the, the last series that I've just gotten into relatively recently, um, again, I blame Laura, is uh, the iridescent or the luminescent range. And the luminescent range basically has like a mica powder mixed into the watercolor to give them a little bit of bling or shimmer. And if bling is your thing, you definitely want to gravitate towards some of the luminescent shades. And the other thing I want to say is they have so many different colors available. There's no way I could describe them all to you. Um, but best recommendation is if you are new, buy a dot card have at it, experiment with it, see which colors you like the best, and then buy a 5 mil tube just to start out. They're incredibly, incredibly saturated, so a tiny bit goes a long, long way. And that's why I actually decided to do the half pan, because I can control better the amount of paint that I get onto my paintbrush. And if I get too much, I can dump it off on this palette side here um, or I can use it to mix however I want to go with it. So I do believe that using them in this way does give me a little bit more flexibility in terms of how much I want to use um, and it also allows me to keep my blends and I can just leave this out to dry just like I have on this side um, and then I can use it again in the future. All you have to do is get some water on that and it will reactivate. But this is a great example of watching the colors separate. So it's a lot of fun um, and I love using them and I could talk all day about it, but I'm not going to. The other thing I love to have on hand when I'm working with watercolor is uh, two glasses of water. And the reason why is, and these are just old jam jars that I'm using, um, but the reason why is I like to keep the warm colors in one and the cool colors in another when I'm washing off my brush. And that just stops your water from getting too muddy too quickly and keeps um, the colors fresher and more clear on your page. Um, now, what do you do if you don't have watercolors? Well, we have some different options that we can use. So the first option that we're gonna talk about is acrylic inks and acrylic inks there's many different companies available i'll run through some of these and they're going to roll so <laughs> i'll do my best okay so de la Rowney, um basically they're fluid acrylic inks you can use them they're highly highly saturated a little bit goes a long way just like with watercolors so what you'll want to do is um use them very finely um, use a light hand when you're loading your brush with these liquitex also makes some acrylic inks as do Hydrus and um, Hydrus and also uh, Dr. P.H. Martins are basically the same company um, and they make different kinds. This is a dark walnut ink. Um, it's a magical product. It's a sepia color, but if you use it very heavily, it will actually turn green and it's truly made out of ground up black walnuts um, and it's really fun to use. Um, and I learned about this product when I took one of Lally Mills classes. So um, it's a lot of fun to try the different products to see how they act. I love using um, these Liquitec inks. And at the first class I taught with Jen and Wendy at our self-esteem um, yearly annual conference that we have every year in June for women. Um, and it's held in Rhode Island. This product is what we used for our project where we made um, a Zen Balance watercolor and then we drew over it. So if you were part of that group, you've already had some level of experience with these and you'll know that they're highly concentrated. And so sometimes the best way to work with these particular guides is to paint in the water and then add a little bit of color, just a tiny bit and watch it spread. Um, it's like watching magic show. And I think that's what I love the most about this is um, the unpredictability of it. And then if you don't have 
inks, you could also use acrylic paint, okay? This is your standard basic student grade paints from Liquitex. And um, one of the things that blew my mind that I never knew about, I had used paint for years and years and years, and nobody had ever told me this, is that there is a marker on paints to tell you what kind of paint it is. And what I mean by that is straight up, it tells you that it's an acrylic paint, it tells you the color, but this little box that is on each of the paints tells you what kind of type of paint it is. So if you have a black square, that means that the paint is opaque. It is not see-through whatsoever, okay? So this would be a good color if I'm trying to cover something up, I could paint over it with this, okay? The middle paint that I have here is a ultramarine blue, and this is a semi-transparent. That means it's a little bit see-through, not completely see-through or sheer, but um, it's kind of like a half opaque and a half translucent. And then the last one, which I just kind of gave away, is this um, fluorescent pink color, and it has an open square. And this clear open square basically means that this is a translucent paint. It is see-through. It won't cover something else up. But it's really fun to create layers of sheer different colors to see through it. And so what you can do if you only have acrylic paint is you can take this paint and you can dilute it with water until you get it to a color that you really like and that looks somewhat like watercolor. And I'm not actually going to do that because this is really based around a watercolor activity. But um, if this is your only option, definitely um, experiment with what you have on hand. If you're using the little craft paints that come from Walmart and like the 50 to a dollar bottles, um, they will do the same thing. So it's just really a matter of mix it to the consistency and the color that you like once you get it on the paper. And don't forget, we'll be doing a practice in just a moment where we'll start getting into some of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you can see the different colors and you can see what you like. And if you want to make it darker or lighter and that kind of a thing. And to be honest, with watercolor, it really is a matter of practice and experimentation in the beginning because you won't understand how they work until you truly begin to start working with them. And so that's essentially watercolor and paint 101. So we're getting ready to get started with our practice warm-up sheet. And so that's what we're going to do next.